What's up guys? We are wrapping up the first wave of Ghostbusters Plasma series with a handful of figures just so I can round out this wave and get them all taken care of because I really want to get to this build of figures. So we're taking a look at the last two Ghostbusters. We have got uh, Peter Venkman and we've got Egon Spengler and then we are going to do the Terror Dog build a figure in this review as well. So we've got these guys here of course in the standard packaging for the line. So done up in that uh, kind of suit motif where it looks like they're canvas suits. You got the figures there in the window, the Ghostbusters logo, you got their patch down there at the bottom. Stylized artwork of the characters on the side and then the back of the box has a lineup similar to Marvel Legends and then a little bit of a write-up. So let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here they are out of the package. So we are going to talk about our Ghostbusters first, and then we'll get to our build-up figure. So we've got Egon, we've got uh, Venkman over here. And for the most part, these are very similar figures to Ray and Winston that I've already covered. Egon in particular, Venkman does have a, a little bit of a change-up as far as sculpt goes down in the leg region. But we're going to do articulation real quick, run through that for the uninitiated. Uh, we'll start with Egon, and then we'll talk briefly about Venkman. So this guy is basically the same as the other two Ghostbusters that I've already talked talked about. So the head can look up, he can look down, little tilt side to side, and then full rotation. I'm going to keep the proton packs on because, well, Ghostbusters. Arms go out at the shoulders, they rotate. You do have a butterfly joint in there, which does afford pretty decent range of motion. You've got your bicep swivel, we've got double jointed elbows, and then you've got vertical hinges and rotation at the wrists. There is no torso articulation as far as a, a cut or any kind of crunch. It's just a single uh, ball peg here because, I mean, likely because of the fact that they have the proton packs on, it would pretty much hinder any other articulation anyway for the most part. So you've got uh, back kick forward, little tilt side to side, and then rotation at the waist. Legs go pretty far out. They kick forward, they kick backwards. You do have your thigh cut. We've got double jointed knees. They're about as stiff as the arms on this figure. And then there is no boot cut, but you've got rocker. And then you've got hinges down at those ankles. The hinges at the ankles are kind of where uh, Venkman is a little bit different because he's got different pants. So his pants actually cover his boots rather than stick inside of them. So the range of motion isn't exactly the same, but it's still uh, pretty similar. So that's really all I wanted to touch on there. Otherwise, he is exactly the same. Uh, you get the same kind of range of motion all over as far as the waist, the arms, the hips, the legs, all that stuff. Even though he has different shins, it's the same range of motion at the knees as well. Now, as far as the overall look and feel here, this is an area where, of course, there's a lot of familiarity between the other figures. Uh, these two are quite similar in their construction. They are quite similar to the Winston figure because Ray is noticeably fatter and it is a problem when it comes to putting his harness on. Venkman is also a little bit fatter. He's a little bit stodgier than the rest and hit, uh, well, then Winston and Egon and his proton pack harness fits a little bit more differently than uh, than the others for me as well. Maybe, maybe that's unique to me uh, and just I'm having an issue, but it did go on a lot harder than Egon's did. And Winston's went on really well. Ray's barely fits at this point. I think it's almost broken, which is definitely an ongoing issue that I've seen with other folks. But the figures in general, I mean, I do think they look pretty good. I still think they could maybe use a little bit of a wash on their uh, their jumpsuits, maybe like a light brown or, uh, you know, like a really, really gray color going on there. I do like the fact that we actually have unique parts here. I do think that Venkman is just, just slightly different enough with those legs to make him stand out from the rest. It's cool to have at least one little difference like that. They they do have the same kind of belt, so we've got the one that has the hole for an accessory that we will talk about shortly. You've got your Tampo Ghostbusters logo. They do, of course, have their, uh, their names uh, painted on their chest with a little patch there. And I like the idea behind these figures for the most part. We do still have I mean, obviously it wasn't going to go away. We still have the scaling issue, so these guys do not scale uh, between other lines. I'm not even going to really go through it this time because I've gone through it enough with the others. They scale within their own line, and that's pretty much it. I do think, though, taken, you know, just at face value for what they are, they still do look pretty good. They do have their proton packs already on them, as I've mentioned. And one thing that I didn't notice, at least earlier on when I was doing these, is that uh, the little markings, I think the cyclotron is what I've been told this is called because, again, I'm not a huge Ghostbuster guy. Uh, they are in different positions. So you've got Egon's over here in the top left, Venkman's over here in the top right. But for the most part, they are still the same thing. There's a lot of little detail in there, nice little paint details. And then of course you've got, you know, the wand, which looks pretty good. There's a little bit of paint on it. You've got the kind of 
not exactly hard, hard plastic, but certainly not soft. And they can hold this pretty decently just fine uh, with their... Uh, with their gripping hands there, you're really only going to get him holding it in his right hand with the uh, left hand to stabilize it, although you can probably switch it the other way around too. It just works a little better that way. And then the big thing though for me is the heads on these guys with uh, Egon in particular looking really, really good. I think this is a spot on likeness. The the photo reel here is applied really cleanly. The glasses look really good. The expression, it's its kind of an expression, like it's almost nothing, but at the same time, there is a little bit of character in there. Venkman's, it kind of looks like Bill Murray. I'm not saying it's not there, but at the same time, I kind of get like a almost too young version of Bill Murray here. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe he looks a little bit too young uh, for me when it comes to this. But the smarmy expression there absolutely sells it. So even if I didn't think it was too much like Bill Murray, that's a good selling point. It's, it's a different thing. He certainly has the most expressive face uh, out of the group. Even if you count Winston's really big smile, I think that you've got a lot of character when it comes to this one. So I really do like the face sculpts on here. Egon, though, I think at the end of the day might be my favorite uh, head and face out of this entire line so far. I think they did just a fantastic job capturing that likeness. Now, as far as accessories goes, since I'm not counting the proton packs at this point, we've already talked about them. Because, again, let's be honest, you're always going to use them. We've got one for each character. So to start with, we do have the PKE meter for uh, Egon here. And this is the accessory that can utilize the hole that's on, well, three of the Ghostbusters belts. So he has a hole on his belt, as does Venkman and Winston, to allow him to peg it on there uh, and hang off of his waist. And it actually fits there pretty good. Sculpt on it's pretty decent. There's only one little lick of green paint for the screen on it. Otherwise, it's fine. He can hold it in either hand just fine. And then Venkman has the uh, trap, which actually looks pretty good. He can hold this, again, in any hand just fine. All of them can hold this just fine. A lot of paint on it. Pretty decent sculpt. It's even got the wheels on there. They don't uh, they don't actually move, but uh, they do have the wheels sculpted on there, and it's hollow on the inside. So you've got like the caution design up there, and then silver and red markings on it. So if you don't count the proton packs, because I mean the Ghostbusters need to have them at all times. These are the two unique accessories. Again, another kind of pain point for me when it comes to this line because I want those effect parts. I want those proton streams. And Winston's the only character that comes with one. Would I would I display them always like that? I'm not really sure. But the idea that only one Ghostbuster can have it still kind of rubs me the wrong way. But I am happy that we have like the full breadth of all of their accessories. You've got the goggles, the PKE meter, the trap, and the proton stream uh, across all four figures and then as far as uh, you know anything else with this line the build a figure does not as usual with most hasbro stuff come with any accessories so let's just roll on into him and here we go here's our build a figure to round out the wave so our terror dog vince clortho and this is a pretty interesting figure because it's so 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 different from the rest of this wave i mean obviously it's an entirely different type of figure it sort of feels marvel legends baffy in some to some ways but it also doesn't feel quite up to that level uh, it does have a pretty good size on it so before we take a look at how it moves uh, here he is next to a ghostbuster and well egon's out of frame but you can see that he's got pretty good bulk and size Obviously, this is a five-ish inch figure, so he's not huge, huge, but there is a pretty good amount of size here, decent amount of plastic. So I'm not, I'm not unhappy with the uh, with the overall product. We've got some interesting articulation, so he's obviously quite different. You've got a head that is on a big double ball, so it goes up a little bit. I mean, but it's a dog, so it can't really look up. Up, he goes down really good. Good side to side movement, but you do have a huge gap there. Granted, if you're looking at it from the front, you won't really see it. And then you can rotate all the way around, but, I mean, that's not normal. You do have a hinged jaw, so he can open and close his mouth. The arms, well, the legs, rather, are different. So the front legs hinge. They go outwards, and then they rotate. There is a rotating single-jointed elbow here. And then you've got hinge and rotation down at the, uh, or rocker rather, down at the ankles, which is pretty good down there. The back legs are very, very different. They are a solid piece down to the ankles. So the ankles hinge and then they rock. And then these just sort of rotate. They're really squeaky too. You can sort of move them a little bit just to give them a little bit of wiggle. But for the most part, they just sort of kick back and forth. And that's really it. I mean, it's, it's a dog, so I'm not really sure I'm, I'm surprised by its articulation or maybe in some respects lack thereof. It's only going to do so much. It has no torso or anything like that, although I guess they could have given it a cut there, but that would have looked very, very unsightly. And speaking of looks, I think 
well, for the most part, this looks pretty good. Again, I like the size on it, and this honestly might be among my favorite things in this particular line because I kind of like the idea of having this even if I don't necessarily want to use it with Ghostbusters. I can use it with other things, so that's kind of cool. And then you've got uh, just a pretty decent sculpt here. Again, size is good. I like the inside of the mouth paint. It's really nicely done. The teeth, the tongue, the overall face looks pretty good, especially with the, uh, the mouth being able to articulate so you can add a little bit of an expression to it. There is a lot of sculpt all over the body as far as wrinkles and folds of skin. And then you do have a little bit of uh, metallic silver paint that runs down the spine of the figure with your little rubbery uh, tail there and then you've got spikes that stick out of the back ankles and all the painted claws and toes and the horns so it is a pretty cool figure you know i'm not sure if we're ever going to get a second one because frankly i'm not really sure how far this line is going to end up going i guess maybe at the end of the day i would have rather gotten a stay puff build a figure but i do think this is really cool and then of course it goes really well with gozer and then it gives your ghostbusters something to fight that is of course within the same line so it's pretty cool no no issues building it no real problems with with legs popping out or anything like that i haven't had any any concerns as far as construction goes so it definitely feels in some ways like a marvel legends build figure but maybe not necessarily at the level where legends is currently if that makes any sense so at the end of the day, this is, well, it's a pretty interesting line. There are definitely some issues here. The big one, well, not literally, is that they're small. They're not six inch figures. So that already presented a problem for me and my collecting needs right out of the gate. I can't mix them with other things as far as photography goes. They can stand on their own on a shelf and they'll look just fine. And they do look, for the most part, pretty good. I still think that they maybe need a little wash on the jumpsuit, but the overall figure, the accessories, the head sculpts, the head sculpts on these figures are all for the most part really, really good. I'd say that Egon again is definitely my favorite. I think they really knocked that one out of the park. I just wish that they came with a little bit more. I wish they all came with proton streams. That might be my one huge problem is I wish they could all blast some demons and ghosts, but they can't do that. The build a figure is pretty solid. And then of course our female figures are kind of hit or miss, but as far as the Ghostbusters go, they're pretty solid. Egon and Venkman in particular are really nicely done, and the Build-A-Figure is a pretty good way to cap it off. I'm not so sure that I expected to get a Terror Dog as a Build-A-Figure, but at the same time, I'm certainly not against it either. So that's going to do it for this look at the Ghostbusters Plasma series, Egon and Venkman, and the Build-A-Figure, Vince Clortho. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.